the Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! In the hills not far from the town of Mineville, Arizona, two men rode the trail as they headed toward a certain cabin. We'll soon get to Benson's place, Jake. When we get what we came for, we'll be on Easy Street. Now listen, Slick. You got me to come here with you by telling me there'd be plenty in it for me. But you didn't say what we're after. I didn't want to tell you till we were almost there, for fear you'd say something without meaning to in one of the towns we passed through. Well, you can tell me now. Well, just before I met you in Tucson, I stopped at a prospector's cabin to get some supplies and see if he had any gold I could grab. I had a gun and when he made a quick draw, and, well, he was done for. I grabbed his wallet before I left. Well... I found a letter in it. Yeah, wait, I'll show it to you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Here. Here it is. Now read it. Well, now listen. Dear Clem, when you made up your mind to go off on your own and I couldn't talk you into staying as my partner, I told you if I struck anything, I'd still want you to share it with me. Ah, sounds interesting. Go on. Mm hmm. It says, uh, I didn't make a strike here, but a professor from the East, he studied rocks and such, stayed with me a while. He used to go off into the hills by himself and be gone sometimes for a couple of days. Well, he got the fever, bad. And knowing he was nearing the end, he told me he'd discovered the lost gold mine of Buena Vista. Said he'd made a map and put it where he kept other papers, in one of five books he had here, written by a fella named Dickens, that I was to have the map. He died. Clem, I figure the map is safe where it is till you get here. Then we'll find that gold mine together. Your old partner, Sam Benson. Holy smoke, Slick. I've heard stories about that lost mine. Yeah, and we're going to get that map and claim the mine. But they told us in town Sam Benson's dead. Died a week ago. Yeah, but the storekeeper told me Benson had no kin, and his stuff was to be auctioned off this afternoon. We'll buy those books and get the map. Let's go. Right. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah. At 
At the Benson cabin, the auction was about over. The auctioneer was saying... Well, that's about all, folks. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's some books. Where am I bid for these five nice thick books by a fellow named uh, Charles Dickens? Well, make me an offer. One of you must be able to read. <laughs> I'll bid 50 cents if you'll throw in that old 10-gallon hat with me. <laughs> Sold to Judge Jackson for 50 cents. <laughs> I can use that hat. Mine's kind of beat up. <laughs> here's the money. Um, here's the hat. And don't forget your books, Jed. Uh, I reckon it'll take you a lifetime to read them through. <laughs> I can read some. <laughs> anyway, I figure books are sort of friendly to have around. <laughs> well, well, here they are. And here's the hat. Yeah. Yeah, better try it on. <laughs> oh, oh, oh Dratic, just a mic too big. Well, some folded paper in the hat band will take care of that. Yeah, that's so. I'll just use one of the papers that's sticking out of those books. Yeah, this one will do. Now I'll fold it into a strip. Yeah, yeah this will do it. That's it. Yeah, that makes it a bit better. Now I'll take my books and get along back to my cabin. See you again sometime. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, boys. A short time later, as the auctioneer was about to climb onto his buckboard, Flick and Jake arrived. Oh, 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 oh. Well, the auction's over, man. I'm just leaving. Everything's been sold. Well, we were told the auction was this afternoon. Oh, nope, this morning. Well, I, uh, I'm interested in books. I was told Benson had a few that some professor left. I wanted to buy them. Oh, yes, yes. Well, it's too bad you weren't here earlier. His book sold for 50 cents to Jed Jackson. Well, do you think he'd sell them to me? Well, I don't see why not. If he offered him more than he paid for him. Where does Jackson live? He has a cabin on the South Trail, three miles from town. He can't miss it. Thanks. Yeah. Let's go, Jake. I... Get up. Oh, here. Jed Jackson, thin, stoop-shouldered, but wiry, was an old-timer among the prospectors of the far west. Like so many others, Jed had found little, but never gave up hope of making a strike. He arrived at his cabin and placed the five Dickens books on a shelf near his bunk. A short time later, he had callers. Uh, a couple of hombres. Wonder what they want. Yeah, all right, I'm coming. Yeah, howdy, gents. Come in. Hey. Come on, Jake. What can I do for you? You Jed Jackson? Yep. Don't recollect meeting you fellas before. You haven't. I'm slick, and this is Jake. I heard you bought some books at the auction. Thought you might want to sell them. <laughs> Can't say that I do, stranger. Always wanted to have a few books around to dress up the place, you might say. I'd give you $5 for them. $5? Well, I... Who told you I bought it? The auctioneer. Then he must have told you what I paid for him. I don't savvy why you want to up the price so much. <laughs> Just want them, that's all. Yeah. You rode two miles to town, then three miles out here, and offer five dollars for something I got for fifty cents. <laughs> nope. If they're worth that trouble in cash to you, mister, reckon they're worth keeping. Don't waste time with him, Slick. I see the books over there. There's a lot of papers sticking out of them, too. Now, well, listen, forget the books. Like and I you said, won't sell, huh? Nope. I'm stubborn that way, mister. And we'll take them, we. Hold on. You're not This will keep you quiet. Oh! Yeah. Now we can look through the books for the map, Slick. Each of those books is stuck full of papers, Jake. It'll take too long looking for it now. Somebody might come along. We'll put the books in our saddlebags and look through them for the map later. Let's get them and get away from here. Come on. <laughs> An hour later, Jed came to. He opened his eyes and saw two men bending over him. What? What happened? Oh, oh my head. I, a, a masked man. An Indian. Easy, mister. Easy. We're here to help you. We'll not hurt you. But that man... We'll talk about that later. We uh, trailed two men here. They must have knocked you out. Yeah. A fellow named Slick and one named Jake. An outlaw named Slick Weaver killed a prospector over near Tucson. We learned he met another man, and the two of them left Tucson together. We failed them this far. Our Slick is tall and sandy-haired. The other man's stocky and black-haired. Hey, those are the two hombres, mister. They stole my books. The five books by Dickens? Uh-huh. But, 
How did you know? We found the prospect in there, Tucson, and he lived long enough to tell us about a letter Slick took from his wallet. Briefly, the Lone Ranger told Jed the contents of the letter. Then he said, The map showing the location of the lost gold mine of Buena Vista is in one of those Dickens books. Something catchy. That's why they wanted him. Oh, to think I had a fortune right in my hands and I didn't know it. Well, Sam Benson has no heirs, so you really own that mine, uh, Mr. Uh, I'm Jed Jackson, mister. Who are you? Uh, maybe you hear uh, Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Uh, you? That's right. Oh, man alive. I still have heard about you. <laughs> Uh, doggone it, why didn't I have a chance to get my hands on that map before those crooks got here? If you had, Jed, they might have killed you to get it. We'll continue to trail them and try to get the map for you. Uh, uh, listen, mister, yes? let me ride with you. All right, Jed, let me help you up. All right. Oh, oh my shaky for a minute, but I'll be all right. And I'll get my hat and we'll ride after those Stephen polecats and get that map. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger bun. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, who were trailing Flick and Jake, told Jed Jackson about the map hidden in one of the Dickens books. Yet realizing a fortune had slipped through his hands, requested that he be allowed to go with the masked man and Indian to trail the two crooks, who had taken time to cover their tracks after leaving Jed Jackson's cabin. As he rode with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, Jed was amazed by their ability to find the trail, in spite of the various methods Flick and Jake had used to cover it. Mister, I thought I was pretty good at trailing, but I'd have lost their tracks long ago. You and Tonto sure wonders. Thanks, Jed. You've had plenty of experience. Mm, that's right. Them lose time by covering tracks. But we notice them always getting closer to river. They must be heading for a hideout someplace. They must be smart enough to figure out that the lost mine is somewhere in the foothills near Benson's place. So they won't go too far away. Mm, that's right. Maybe we get... Look, Apache's coming over a rise ahead. They cover in the woods quickly. <laughs> The three men hurriedly took cover and opened fire as a small group of Apaches came over a rise ahead. For a few moments, the Indians fought back. Then they turned and fled after two of them had been wounded. Man alive. You think I didn't try to trail those two cooks alone? Must have been a hunting party. I think it's safe enough now to go on. Right. Easy, Come on, sir. Come on, sir. The Lone Ranger and his two companions continued to trail Spike and Jake. And a short time later, as they rode along a stretch of scrub desert land, Toto drew attention to a strange haze over the sun. Look at them. It seems very strange. Yes, I don't like the look of it. Look to southwest, Kimasabi. Storm cloud. Dark wall like cloud reaching to the ground. I don't win for a sandstorm. Oh, oh. Strong wind behind that. We'll dismount and hurry. Both of them. Easy to see. All right, boy. 
The ominous black wall moved closer, and the whine of the wind grew stronger as the three men turned their horses back toward the oncoming storm and covered the animal's eyes and nostrils. Easy, Silver. Easy, big fella. You're all right. Easy. Then grasping the trailing reins, the masked man and his friends covered their faces with their bandanas and crouched in the sand. Then the storm struck with full fury. For 15 or 20 minutes, the terrifying sandstorm raged about them. Finally, it subsided as quickly as it had come. Go, oh, look past. <laughs> you look over the horses. Uh, Empty them all right. Not hurt by the storm. Silver's fine. Aren't you, big fella? There you are. Yeah. By golly, storms like that scare the daylight out of me. Me too. And now the train of those crooks is gone for good. Seems like we've had all this trouble for nothing. Maybe, but we'll not give up, Jed. <laughs> If I thought we were going to run into any more Apaches or sandstorms, I'd give up in spite of losing a fortune. Good, we're trailing a murderer. He must be caught. Ah, uh-huh. they lost now, but we know we're going to head to the river. That's right. We'll ride to the river, then search for a possible hideout. All right, let's go. Get here, boy. Oh, yes. Just before the storm struck, Flick and Jake had reached the shack, which stood on the edge of a bluff overlooking the river. They sat at a table near a window on the cliff side of the shack and watched the storm pass, then opened the window and started searching through the book for the map. Well, nothing in this one called Oliver's Cliff. Yeah, I've looked through this one. David Copperfield. No map here. Now here, take this one. Tale of two cities. All right. I'll look through the one called... Six weeks of papers. Carefully, the two men looked through the book, scanning the pages and looking over the loose notes which had been filed in the book. Finally, Flick spoke impatiently. Yeah, there's nothing in any of these four thrown through the open window into the river. Yeah. Yeah. I sure hope the map is in that last book. We're getting rid of those. Let's search the last one. Right. <laughs> this one's named Great Expectation. That fellow Dickens sure did a lot of writing. Yeah. The fellow who used to own the book sure saved a lot of loose papers. The man's fine to be in that one slick, so look carefully. Uh, Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto had reached the river, accompanied by Jed Jackson. A short distance to the south, the river ran into a canyon, so they headed north and rode the river trail in search of the crook. Finally, the trail led to a wooded bluff bordering the river. Suddenly, Toto spoke. Look, see, Masabi. There's Jack, the Major Bluff. And you see two horses ground it behind Jack. That may be the hideout. There's this man among the trees and a close down foot. Who's it? Who's it? I'll go to the door. You and Taro have pushed the windows on the land side of the shack. We've got to take them by surprise. All right, let's go. Oh. Inside the shack, Flick and Jake were still carefully going through the last book, looking for the map. Oh, darn it, we're halfway through and no sign of it. It must be in this book, though. It better be after all the trouble we went through. Maybe drawn on one of the pages instead of on a loose sheet of paper. You sure you were careful to look on every page of the book you said? Yeah. It was plenty, kid. Well, it's bound to be in this one. We'll look and see. Hey, look, a map. He's after the map. Oh, oh, going. Oh, oh my God. We will. We have trailed you from the Texas border. Oh. We found the prospector you killed near Tucson. You were wanted for stage robbery, but now you're wanted for murder. Now come a mess, somebody was trailing you, Flick. I don't believe him. He's after the map. Those are the two armies who stole my boots with the map hidden in one of them. Please, Flick. They do know about the map. Ah, oh, shut up. The prospector whose letter you took lived long enough to tell about it. The sheriff of Tucson and his men are searching the hills near there for you. Out on either side to continue working alone and nice to keep on your trail. We better search him for the map. The map must be in this book, but you'll never get it. Hey, look out! Oh, he threw it out the window. Too bad, Jed. If the map's in that book, it's now at the bottom of the river. Oh, dog darn it. After all we went through. Jed, in a moment of frustration and anger, threw his newly purchased hat to the floor. 
Oh, you fall out of the hat. Oh, that. I used it to make the hat fit me. Bought the hat at the auction. It was a mite too big. Oh, wait, fellow. Let me see that down the paper. See these men's others. Uh-huh. Yeah, I noticed something. Tell me, Jeb, where did you get this paper? Yeah, I was sticking out of one of the books, so I used it. Look here. This is a map. What, huh? a map? Yeah, it's a map showing the location of the lost mine. The map? Jumping the hockey fast. After all our trouble, I had it with me all the time. Of all that doggone luck. You take Weaver and his pal to jail in Mineville, Jed. Then you locate the lost mine and register your claim. <laughs> Later at Mineville, Slick and Jake were jailed. The following morning, with the help of the Lone Ranger and Toto, Jed located the lost mine and then returned to town and registered his claim. That afternoon in the cafe, Jed was telling the news to the crowd. Yes, if it hadn't been for that mask man, I'd have gone around wearing that hat till it wore out without knowing I had a fortune in it. Oh, who was the mask man? Yeah, how come he was Jed and Weaver? That's what Slick Weaver wanted to know. <laughs> You should have seen the look on his face when he found out he'd been trailed by the one hombre he could never hope to get away from, the Lone Ranger. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Sir Rose. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita Brown and Serve. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. Listen to the Lone Ranger... A few minutes later, Hamilton Meade heard a rap on the door. He crossed the room, opened the door, and saw an Indian lifting a heavy blanket-wrapped figure from the back of a paint horse. Red Chief, what goes on? He brings dead man. He's carrying him inside. A dead man? Ah. Him, Jeremiah called it. Now hold on. Red Chief, corn is busy. And if this was a sheriff, the old man murdered. Murdered? Uh, himself. Uh, did, uh, did you kill him? No. We not know who killed him. We find him outside Burn Cabin. So that's your story, huh? But I think you killed him. Why you think <coughs> you're covered? Put your hands up. But you don't we fear them. You not regular sheriff. Nevertheless, I'm arresting you. <laughs> Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Kendall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Ford.